Hello there. Today we'll be looking at the Robins of Dudley fighting knives. Uh, Robins of Dudley are British knives produced uh, for private purchase by Robins of uh, and Company of Dudley. Before we get into the knives themselves, I will tell you a little bit about Robins of Dudley. Before selling knives during the Great War, Robins of Dudley, whose full name Robins and Company of Dudley, started off as brass founders and fender makers in the mid-1870s. Uh, they were from Dudley in Worcester, England, making all sorts of metal work from fire guards, decorative grills, uh, etc. As the company grew, it added ironwork uh, to its production and produced bathtubs and other cast and wrought iron products. Around 1906, they started to produce art metalwork items, and by 1910, uh, there were, that was their only pursuit, really. Um, with the coming of the Great War, Robins of Dudley turned their skills to purchasing a variety of fighting knives for sale to British soldiers. Uh, the firm produced no less than uh, 10 variants of these knives, uh, all of which are very scarce today. Um, now, there are, like you say, lots of different ver variants. The main variant is the push dagger. It's the more common, shall we say. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's still a very, very scarce dagger. However, it is the most common out of the Robins and Dudley fighting knives. Uh, now, with anything that is scarce, unfortunately, you will come across uh, many copies of these knives trying to be sold as original. When speaking about these original knives, I will give any dimensions and in inches, um, as you can appreciate, the British uh, used imperial measurements um, that were used uh, from 1824. The metric system wasn't introduced till approximately 1965. Okay, so first the, pun the punch dagger. Um, this beautiful knife is made from heavy alloy uh, cast um, Heavy duty cast alloy. As you can see, it has a pistol like grip uh, shaped for com comfort fitted with a knuckle duster type guard. Um, the grip itself is shaped so that three fingers are positioned below the blade and the index finger above the blade, running at the right angle from the grip, which projects from the middle of the clenched fists. As you can see, the blade form is short with a flattened overall section double-edged blade tapering to a narrow spear point. Uh, the two arrow fullets, if you have a look down in here, narrow fullers in there, which merge towards the grip, are formed on the edge face. Uh, the blade itself was manufactured as standard at four and a half inches long from under the knuckle itself. Uh, the Romans of Dudley manufacturer stamp is clearly shown, as you can see on there. Um, uh, look, these were always stamped. Now, there's a lot of copies out there. Um, it's a good way to tell if your knife is real or not, or if you're thinking of purchasing, purchasing a Robins of Dudley knife, uh, that you make sure it's clearly stamped and uh, never, ever um, engraved. Uh, most copies these days um, will be engraved, and it's a great way just to show that that's, that's definitely not a, a traditional Robins of Dudley because uh, they never engraved any of their knives. Uh, the second variation, which I'm going to show you um, in a second, um, but uh, just to have a look at the scabbard. Um, now, it's a leather tan scabbard, um, which, which comprises of a flat loop attached to the edge um, of the actual proper blade sleeve. Uh, a thin leather securing strap fixes the uh, fixes it to the uh, the brass fastener, uh, as shown, which keeps the knife in there uh, nice and secure. Uh, now these were great, great knives, great knives. Um, hence why a lot of people uh, still used them in the Second World War, because um, everyone used to uh, talk about these, uh, say what uh, great knives they were, and. Uh, Second World War, they were still in use. A great, great knife. Very, very uh, small, uh, unclumbersome, if you like. Uh, very, very good knife indeed. Now, the second knife I'm going to show you is the is another variation. 
um, which, is, which was traditionally known as the three finger knuckle knife. Um, now this is a great, great knife. Um, this really is a beautifully crafted knife which fits perfectly uh, into the hand. Okay, which you could hold as so, or you could always the other way. Okay, this really is a beautiful knife as I said. Um, now this variant is far less encountered uh, than the punched uh, dagger. Um, it is eight and seven eighth inch overall length and it has a five and one eighth inch blade. Um, the blade itself is seven eighth of an inch wide at the base and tapers pay, uh, rapidly to the sharp point edge, um, which is always a double edge on this uh, particular knife. Uh, two narrow fullers, as you can see, uh, run from the base of the blade um, down to about three quarters of the way down the blade itself. Uh, this knife has a nice solid steel guard, as you can see there. Um, three inch wide cast into the hilt to protect the first three fingers as you can see there okay um now again as you can see perfectly punched robin's dudley again never engraved always punched beautiful punch hope you can see that clearly and this really, really, really is a beautiful, beautiful blade. And a beautiful knife to have a uh, private purchase. Um, like I say, these knives were so effective and highly regarded. They saw service in uh, World War II, long after Robins of Dudley ceased to trade. The scabbard itself... You can see uh, these were manufactured as standard at eight and a half inches long. Um, and it's a really good scabbard. Again, just a standard brass little fastener there. Slit in the lever, the slit over the top. Beautiful variation knife. Can be used in different ways. And this really is, like I say, a beautiful, lovely, traditional First World War Great War knife. Okay, thank you for watching my video, and I will be doing weekly videos on Great War Knives, so please like, share, and subscribe to see all future uploads. Thank you for now. Take care. Bye now. Thank you.